Hello everyone. My name is Tyler Green. I'm a second year biology scholar attending Dartmouth College and pursuing the pre-medical track from Lenexa, Kansas. Good morning. I am Maya Connor, a rising sophomore at North Carolina A&T studying health services management from Richmond, Virginia. Good morning. My name is Nina Green. I attend Spelman College, majoring in economics, minoring in management and organization from Washington, D.C. Hello, everyone. My name is Hope Daga. I'm a rising sophomore at Rockhurst University as a pre-nursing major. Today, we'll be talking to you all about expanding and improving the public health system. Our team decided to take a unique approach to this by focusing on the public health system's impact on the Native Americans and their population as a whole. We chose the Native Americans because of Tyler's attendance at Dartmouth College, which has a history of being founded for Native Americans. We also chose it because of Maya's experience of going to high school with Native Americans of the Pomaki tribe in Tappahannock, Virginia. Today, we'll be talking to you about three things. The public health system, Native American health, and our solutions to create a more inclusive public health system. To start us off, what is the public health system? The public health system is a field that seeks to improve the lives and health of its community through the treatment and prevention of diseases and also the promotion of healthy behaviors. Next up, who is included in the public health system? The public health system is made up of all public, private, and voluntary entities that contribute to the delivery of essential public health services within a jurisdiction. Some organizations that make up the public health system would be the Centers for Disease Control, the CDC, who are responsible for protecting us from all safety, health, and security threats, both foreign and domestic. Another organization would be the Food and Drug Administration, or the FDA. They're responsible for ensuring the safety, efficacy, and security of all human and veterinary drugs, biological products, and and other things. <laughs> Next up, what does the system do? The system has many responsibilities, such as educating the public on healthier choices, promoting physical fitness and activity, preventing the spread of infectious diseases, and the outbreaks of diseases. Now that we know what the public health system is, who is included, and what the system does, the final question would be, who does the system serve? The system serves everyone within the community, but sadly, the services vary disproportionately, especially amongst vulnerable communities such as African Americans, Latinos, and even those of low socioeconomic status. Since the beginning of our history, Native Americans have suffered at the hands of Western colonists. As Hope mentioned, I'm a second year scholar attending Dartmouth College with familiarity on the history of the institution. The founding of Dartmouth College unjustly usurped the land of the Native American Abenaki tribe in 1769. Here, Native American classes were indoctrinated into Western culture as Protestant Christianity was forced upon the population. However, in order to comprehend the underrepresentation of Native Americans in the public health care system, I believe we should take a step back and focus on the history of Native Americans during the period of Western colonization. With the expansion of colonialism carried also foreign infectious diseases the Native American population had never experienced. The rampant spread of syphilis, smallpox, measles, and tuberculosis decreased the Native American population by roughly 90% by the first century of contact with colonial parties. In response to these severe rates of lethality, reservations were federally implemented to isolate Native Americans under sovereign entities between the 1830s and 1870s. However, under these restrictive conditions, Native Americans endured a plethora of detrimental traumas with food insecurity and poor housing, in addition to their only option of healthcare being the underfunded Indian Health Service, or IHS, implemented in 1955. As a result, mortality rates and rates of infectious disease remain exceedingly high among reservation populations. Moving forward, in light of the current pandemic of COVID-19, we can see similar patterns of generational trauma as well as adverse health risks, such as chronic heart disease, domestic violence, and alcoholism 
in the Native American population today. Like Tyler said, COVID-19 negatively affected Native American populations. But to further understand this, we first must focus on how COVID-19 affected our overall public health system. COVID-19 had a profound effect on our public health system and showed that our system is flawed and not inclusive. One of the main indicators which shows that our system is flawed is that during COVID-19, underserved populations, such as brown and black people, died at disproportionate rates compared to their white counterparts. These disproportionate rates go against the direct goal of the public health system to advance the health of all communities and all people. When our group was examining how different underserved populations were impacted by COVID-19, we were astonished by the high death rates that Native Americans faced. Native Americans are one of the most overlooked and ignored groups of people and experienced the highest death rate out of any racial and ethnic group in the United States. If you avert your attention to the slide in the map which depicts COVID-19 death rates by race and ethnicity in the United States, you will see a plethora of races and ethnicities listed, such as Asian Americans, Latino Americans, White Americans, Pacific Islander Americans, Black Americans, and Indigenous Americans. If you look at the bottom bar graph, you will see that there were 250 Native American deaths per 100,000 cases. But if you look in the middle of the graph and you look at the white American rate, you will see that there were 100 deaths per 100,000 cases. In addition to the statistics shown on the slide, a study done by Johns Hopkins University revealed that Native Americans were three and a half times more likely to be hospitalized from COVID-19 in 2020 compared to their white counterparts. Now you all might be thinking, how is this possible when Native Americans make up the smallest ethnic and racial population in the United States, yet white Americans are the majority? Oftentimes, people focus on the past of Native Americans, ignore their current health issues. Yes, Native Americans do live on independent reservations and are recognized as independent entities. However, these reservations are federally funded. One of the federal programs that is funded by the United States government on reservations is called the Indian Health Service. The Indian Health Service is responsible for the health care of 2.2 million Native Americans across 574 reservations. <coughs> they provide a multitude of services such as inpatient, outpatient, emergency, public health, and preventative health care. However, the Indian, the Indian Health Service is underfunded which means that during COVID-19, Indian, Indian Health Service facilities were not adequately equipped to handle the influx of COVID-19 patients, which resulted in high death rates. Our group decided to compare how much the United States spends on healthcare per individual compared to the IHS to further illustrate this underfunding. We discovered that the United States spends $4.1 trillion on healthcare, which equates to nearly $12,140 per person, but the IHS is only allocated $6 billion, which equates to roughly $2,700 per person. This means that Americans not living on reservations are receiving nearly five times the amount of funding compared to Native Americans on reservations. This is not fair. The lack of funding for the IHS and the high death rates due to COVID-19 in the Native American community are egregious. It is time for the United States government to make full reparations from the past and help this vulnerable population to the fullest extent possible. In order for us to improve and expand our public health system, we must include all vulnerable populations, including Native Americans. To rebuild our public health system, our cohort came up with a solution that includes Native American populations. To do this, we propose an increase in funding for the Indian Health Service. Like Maya said, in fiscal year 2020, the $6 billion worth of funds allocated to the Indian Health Service only covered 60% of healthcare needs, leaving them with a 40% deficit. To address this $2.4 billion deficit, sorry, um, we will implement two programs and also ask for an increase in funding. First, an educational program um, that consists of a reciprocal educational system meant to foster a co-creative partnership between local health departments, the Indian Health Service, and willing Native American influential leaders, in which each party contributes ideas to progress forward, 
open dialogue and create a shift in the public health system. The public health department is responsible for learning the norms and values of the indigenous American communities. We had the privilege of learning from Chief Officer of Community Relations, Nikki Donawa at University Health about the importance of understanding the cultures and traditions of different ethnic groups in order to best serve them. We also propose to provide additional educational resources for healthcare facilities on reservations to provide additional healthcare training and ensure quality care is provided. Second, an equitable access program. We propose that this program has a focus on a more human-centered approach that provides a high-value healthcare experience for Native Americans. To provide a more beneficial experience, funding would be allocated to providing updated medical technology and improving the infrastructure of existing medical facilities. Both of these programs will assist in mending the deficit and the overall productivity and well-being <coughs> of the Native American population by decreasing health risks providing additional resources, and properly equipping them to face future healthcare concerns. Healthcare should be a human right. Since we are recovering from COVID-19 and rebuilding the public health system, it's time we include the Native Americans in this modernization. One of our cohort's biggest goals is to become culturally competent and inclusive healthcare leaders. In closing, this recommendation is one small step in the direction of the inclusion and representation of Native Americans in our public health system. Thank you.